Well, my musical debut was uh, when I made an entrance with my first single, Bouge. Uh, people call it Keba, people say you're crazy, in which way it was a, a three way single. It was me, Sarkodie, Karkasi, you know, and, and, and that was the beginning of a journey. It was late 2008. Uh, before that, then I had performed it in 2007 on the same platform. I opened a concert for John Legend at the Independence Square. And then uh, a year after, the song came out fully and then just took off. When I was approached by the young Adam in 2006, I was baffled that uh, he had, you know, the courage to really want to, you know, approach with the airway. And that alone made me feel like he's uh, forced to reckon with. So I immediately got to his case and groomed him for his debut album, The Volta Regime. And for me, it wasn't about the music, it was uh about trying to tell people that anything you set your mind to do, you can do it and trying to go against all odds. So, uh, Ewe being a, a minor language in, in, with respect to being a hip-hop art and people saying it couldn't go mainstream was uh, an inspiration for me to, to double up and, and, and lead up to the challenge. And so, every new challenge I meet is, a, is an inspiration for me to try to elevate so that people get to understand that in life, it is not about what people are doing. It's not about the standards. It's about you saying, I'm going to do the impossible. And that's, that's basically Adam. The artist Adam was one of my favorite jobs ever. It was a challenge. Adam displayed prowess never seen before. He had the ability to compose a chorus spontaneously. You know, he, had, he has the ability to think on his feet. When you, when you release a beat, Adam can compose to the beat within five minutes. And that was his plus. And even though he was handicapped by the Ewa language, the first album was born classic. Well, the change of name for my Adam to Adam was forged uh, on three reasons. One of the reasons was uh, uh, change in brand direction. It was also because of advice from very elderly people. And thirdly, it was because the purpose of the name Aigbe was served. And on the first album, The Volta Regime, I wanted to find a way to demystify it. I did that to uh, a large extent, but I still had advice from elderly people that the direction I had to take my brand, I needed to, to change the direction of of, of that name since I'm propagating the Volta region in Ghana, I had to sell it properly and so it called for a change in name. And then it also called for a change in name because I was an ethnic other sites of Edom that the entire Ghanaian society, the African continent didn't know about. Uh, you hear my debut album is entirely hip hop and I moved from that album and I moved straight to an album that has song from the 60s, that has Get to Arise, that is a reggae song, that has Over Again, that is contemporary, if I can put it that way, that has made a cuckoo, which is entirely hip-hop. And so, uh, uh, the new Adam uh, was born and we, we felt it was appropriate. Uh, Mass Production uh, was an album I decided to do with the focus of repeating a classic album. We came up with the name Mass Production because we wanted to have a piece of every kind of person in existence on the album. We wanted to please everybody in every walk of life. And in order to repeat a classic album, my instincts told me I had to be more diverse and I had to open new frontiers to, to, to my art that people didn't get to know. So it was an interesting and daring uh, adventure of two years. Uh, I was sent out uh, by my team to go and work with other producers unlike the previous album. I worked with Lil Shaker, I worked with EO, I worked with Hammer, I worked with Sammy Black. A genius, he worked with Red Eye. And so it was an experience of working with uh, entirely different people. Unlike the first album which was entirely produced by me. <laughs> Yeah. 
much production kicked off to, uh, on a on a really relaxed note. Uh, we released too much, uh, and when we released too much, it was a song that had a storyline of me trying to go a lady in a supermarket and using all the products in the supermarket to try to get her attention. Like I'll be tasting no way, she no go feel resist, I'll be right cool. She know they won't make her go, I'll be the ultimate and be here and I tell her grab her when you go there. And when we kicked off, it caught on pretty well. And and then after that, we decided to, my team and I decided to zoom in on what Adam stood for, which was hip hop. And so we released the video for The Legacy, which features Tiny, shout out to Tiny. He came to to support the video, had a storyline of MOB being chased. Uh, just the usual militant state of mind that uh, I, I came up with as an artist. I did three songs on that album, uh, The Legacy, Kate featuring Joey B, The Legacy featuring Tiny, and uh, I think uh, Too Much, you know, co-produced by Sammy Black. It was a beautiful project. Uh, I'm glad he was able to come up with an album like Mass Production. And after that we took a breather and then we, we, we kicked off with Get to Arise, which is a story of uh, two people, one called Kwame and one called Sina. Kwame lives in Nima, goes through various harsh situations and, and tries to make it out of the slum. And Sina is also a very bright student, but because of not getting money to pay her fees, she, has to, she had to do what she had to do. And at the end of the day, she still rose out of the, 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 the slum. So Get to Arise was a song. That was an extension of my charity works, trying to use music to still motivate and, and, and push people to be inspired and try to do positive things. And after that, I got into uh, a project with uh, Quiet Institute uh, on their Read Wide. And, and later, just uh, a while ago, Keto Arise was nominated for Development Song. We didn't make it uh, as the final winners, but I think the purpose of the song was set. Everybody is inspired, right? And, and it's all, almost all the time on BBC, Trace TV, Urban, Channel O. And then came over again. I feel personally, it wasn't the song that we really put a lot of time into. Over again, was done under 24 hours. I got a beat from Genius, 12 midnight. In the morning, I get into the studio. The, the hook is in my mind. The chorus is off. I do the first 16 bars. And by evening, the song was done. And we added it to the album and it kicked off. I feel a lot of people feel attached to it, both uh, personally and uh, it's more realistic for people to deal with. So it just took off. It's been awesome so far. Other videos are following. I have made a cuckoo that I'm shooting another song of mass production. Later in the year, people are going to see Go Get Away features better. And and so it's it's, it's still on the rise. Actually, sharing the same stage wasn't exciting as the experience I had when I was in the studio with Caprich. I was in the studio with Caprich on Joy FM 99.7 and Bolloray told Caprich that uh, there's an artist in Ghana who has done a reggae song that is really doing well. So he played a reggae song to Caprich for the first time when we were in the studio. And for me, being an, uh, uh, a Ghanaian artist whose background of music and background of trying to study Jamaican patois is just being in GSS and SS. And for Caprich to hear my music in the studios of Joy and Go, like, whoa, it's really, really rich. And on the level of reggae across board, across Asia, across Jamaica, it was pretty impressive. And then the moment of excitement for me came when we went to the concert 
And before I was going to go on stage, I was invited to the room of Busy Signal. And just when I entered the room to give him the album, he told Kepridge, then when you buy that, then when you talk about saying, play the guitar rights, him is dope now. And I felt it was a moment when somebody from Jamaica listens to a song that is reggae, that is made in Ghana. And just by his friend telling him in, in, in his room, he, he feels in, in, in so, so impressed with it. It just makes me feel that our creativity in Ghana has no boundaries and we just have to keep pushing and we are going to elevate. The last time I performed at the uh, VJMA was uh, 2009. I performed Bouget and uh, if I can rightly say two years down the line if I'm right to perform again it was pretty exciting and the nominations uh, were more exciting for me. I have three nominations, Best Rapper of the Year category, the Year Hip Hop Song of the Year category and Get to Arise's Reggae Song of the Year. Uh, I'm performing later tonight. We are going to perform over again the song that is telling every guy that you have to respect your lady. I put it upon myself that each time I get on stage to perform, the fans have to feel the energy that is in the studio, the energy that we had when we were creating the music, how exciting it was when it was at the stage of being an idea in the mind of the artist. So I tried to put all that together and put it out for, for the fans. We didn't get to cop any of the awards home, but it was so relevant to, to me as an artist that we put out work and then uh, people get to appreciate it. We've got good feed from the performance. We've been given thumbs up for, for that performance at the VGMA and, and we are grateful. Let's go get him. Let's go. I feel Adam is the best artist in this country right now because uh, unlike most of the artists, he's really handicapped by um, uh, um, an unpopular language musically and also he has the ability to sing rap and actually dance hall. There, there are few artists who are able to do these things and I think these are the things that make them a unique artist. Expectations on being named uh, the brand ambassador for Absolute uh, are enormous. Uh, I've said one thing to the team already. Uh, we can together, Absolute and I can together release an album where we'll have four reggae songs back to back and try to move it around. I'm putting together a song uh, for Absolute Vodka that's called Let's Party. I'm looking at having exciting experiences with. Uh, yeah, events that they are putting together. It's just going to be a crazy and awesome journey of fun and, and trying to get people to understand the brand and get people to get to know that uh, it's a very, very strong brand. Because uh, as far as I know, they've signed likes of Jay-Z. It gives me a fair idea where the brand direction is taking and I hope it's going to be exciting and challenging to us well. Let's go! Get them!